<laughs> Careful with that front view. Might get a <laughs> slippage. <laughs> quite some time. It's another leg day video with Jared, the man of the king of full range of motion here. So I know you guys like these videos, so we finally were able to find a day where we could, uh, you know, our schedule was lined up. And of course, it just so happened to be leg day, so I figured this would be a cool video for you guys. Um, he's just starting, you know, the train hard again after his uh, prep, and I'm pretty deep balls in the training hard, so it should be fun. After we did a couple warm up sets, or working sets of the Abduct the Machine, now with the next is we'll probably be our only Hampshire movement of the day, really. We'll be lying leg curl. So about two, a couple warm-up sets here, about two to three working sets, and then we'll move on to the uh, quad push. I use this specifically because I do feel it in my quads. Very, very good. And also, I don't really feel any hip or knee pain at all when I do this one. Sometimes if I use a standard leg press, I will get a little knee pain or hip pain or whatever. Um, whenever I use this, it kind of eliminates all that. And I'm able to just really focus on what I'm trying to focus on, which is the quad. So this is why this is a staple in the quad day. one plate at a time. I don't want to make too, too big of a jump too fast. I'm only in a couple reps per plate here that I'm doing. And hopefully I'm gonna do eight as my working set. And the goal is to hit about 10, 12 with that. Okay, so change the plans. We're not gonna do eight. I don't feel I'm ready yet. So instead of doing eight for 10, 12, I'm trying to beat this by a rep or two. Still just as good. Come on, I just see all those. Yes, come on, two. One more, Jerry. One more, Jerry.
I took my life. That was a little rough. It's crazy. Back in the day, I used to have like 10, 11 plates on here per side. I just wasn't doing full range. Oh, that one's left in control. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. It's crazy. You don't understand how much muscular damage you're doing going that slow. Especially with someone your size, like, had you maintained the size you were a couple years ago and you only changed cadence, you might have been able to work back up to 10 plates per size. Oh, yeah. But because your muscle is so much bigger, you accumulate way more like lactate and metabolites and things like that. You get a bigger pump in your muscle, which just makes it fucking impossible. Okay. Like, a oh, lot yeah. of damage. But they're fucking false. <sighs> Flawless. After that brutal leg press, we're now gonna move on to the arsenal hack squat here. Since you just did like a bit more of a metabolite accumulating on that last set, like 15, 20 reps. Yeah. For you, I assume your legs are pretty fast twitch, which means they likely respond really well to like the seven to 12 range. So if you wanna do like, kinda like how we did the leg press and then we smith squatted. And heavy as fuck. And you, you did like eight reps on your first set. Yeah. It might be fine to do the same thing on the hack squat for you. Um, I'm aiming for that, like the 10 would be like good, Yeah. <laughs> so right. on my first set. I always seem to work harder when Jared's here. He's getting locked in. <laughs> He's very in the zone. <laughs> Half the time they're not even actually doing that. And kind of just moving shit and like screaming. But like how hardcore is it for you to be in every fucking rep and actually like feeling the fucking rep every, and you're in your mind the whole time like I want to fucking quit, but you're not. It's like a marathon runner, just like I have eight hills left in this marathon and I know each of them gets steady and steadier of an incline, but I'm gonna fucking do it. So like toward the end of your session, you're like, like right now I'm just like, well I still gotta control this fucking rep and I still gotta go pretty goddamn close to failure. Or I could just be like, you know, I'm so hardcore. Is that, that's not even hardcore. Like, that's what I'm saying. It's about the people that try to rack this machine out <laughs> and pretty much rock this bitch. Yeah. Or they got to fucking, not, not making fun of people that have put bands on, but then you got people that rack it out, put bands on. It's, it's not making fun of 
funny y'all, but I am. Just stop that shit. <laughs> you get rid of the best part, the stretch media to hypertrophy. Well, something like, okay, let's make the stretch easier. Why? That's where the most growth is. That and the eccentric growth. You just tell what the people are looking for. They keep asking you to say the vagina thing again. Huh? Everyone keeps commenting the vagina thing again. Oh yeah, well it's yeah. If you you know do your squats, it's why it is a vagina that can ran through. It's not gonna work out. <laughs>
religiously by after the Arnold. And I th I'm pretty sure I'm going to be about 10 pounds heavier than what I was at the Olympia. Not the Arnold, but the Olympia. And I was 255 um, at the Olympia. So I have a gut feeling I'm going to be about 10 pounds heavier. So I just goes to show what this training style is very capable of doing to someone like me or even somebody, you know, who's just starting out and wants, you know, one really wants to get into it, learn, get the results quicker than normal. Um, and it's just training optimum. Again, it's focusing on the reps. It's focusing on the eccentrics. It's full range of motion, full depth, full that. And it works. And doing it like really sequential and something that Nick's always been big on anyway, but like I'll, I'll speak to it. His rest per week is a little higher than most people think. And he's taken a couple deloads whenever he's feeling really fucking beat up. And really just like using that phasic approach, which is really where Renaissance periodization came in. That, that term periodization is just taking a more like codical and periodized approach to your training. Whereas Nick, for him, that's like, oh man, I'm fucking beat up this week. I'm gonna take about four light sessions and a couple off days, which is a deload. And he gets right back to training fucking hard again. So using that, that very like sports science background, I've been able to kind of help Nick realize the importance of that. Whereas, you know, I mean, you and Matt already, well, you rested like two or three days a week anyway. We were, yeah. So, I mean, yeah. it just goes to show the importance of rest, the frequency in your training, and then all this other shit we've been talking about. But, man, 10 pounds would be pretty fucking cool to see on stage. It would be yeah. fucking yeah. dope. But, all right, that is today's video, today's lesson. Make sure you like, subscribe, and we'll see you for the next one.